fantastic story. Uh, the, real, the story isn't necessarily about me. It's about the opportunity that we took 20 years ago, myself and Carol, to build a global company from scratch from the Philippines. Uh, but before we get into sort of what ADEX did and all that good stuff is, you know, the reality of putting up a company, no matter what size you are, is you're always balancing sort of this short term versus long term. I mean, everybody in this business, whether an SME or whether you're a PLDT, you have the reality of sort of exploiting whatever resources that you have today in front of you in your hand, whether you have nothing or you have just an idea, or thinking about around the bend. Probably the number one challenging thing for any business person is to balance this. And to be very frank with you, most companies are very challenged with it. And some of what I'm trying to uh, explain is where ADEC came from, what we did to try to make sure that we're part of it. I won't say that we've always been in this 2%. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. We've absolutely sometimes gone too much on innovation. And then sometimes we've had businesses that just sort of got stuck in the mire. But as we go through this sort of journey about what ADEX stands for, uh, well, let me just back up one second. Does anybody know what ADEX stands for? Nobody from the ADEX team can answer. When we started the business, we started in Alabang. I didn't think anybody would actually buy Alabang Data Exchange Corporation. So we actually had to properly, we branded it American Data Exchange from Alabang. So again, we had to balance off the reality of where we were and what we were trying to position ourselves in the globe. So that's what ADEC is. Some of you may have bumped into it one way or the other, but it was raised and born in the Philippines. Vision and mission. We really started off with a longer term vision to sort of say we wanted to have an impact. We wanted to have an impact in all of our businesses. Uh, Initially, we've got, well, not initially, but now we have about 3,000 folks here in the Philippines. And from growing from scratch, I think one of the speakers talked about the impact you have on their families, the fact that they're sending their kids to school, they're paying mortgages. I mean, this, this is important. We, we absolutely took it very seriously, our ability to have sustainable work and bring that to the Philippines. Next, we chose a mission that we thought was really out there. The fact that environment, social, and governance is, uh, well, let's put it this way. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it was, all it is really is considered is just a cost. Very unsexy, very tough to sell. It's more considered like compliance. Just do this so that, you know, get it out of the way. We took that as an opportunity to develop ADEC into what could we provide for solutions. So, what we thought was, let's take a license. Let's take and innovate ourselves to create new solutions for environment, social, and governance. Again, uh, it was a bit of a stretch, but today I can tell you one of our divisions called Envirocyte is the second largest aggregator of environmental data for the United States. So if you're going to build a building in the United States, you need an environmental impact study. There's probably about a 46% chance you're buying that information from ADEC. And all of that information is aggregated here in the Philippines and then spun back up into the U.S. market. So to give you an idea, some broad, pros, broad brush vision and mission led to opportunities and real tangible services. History, myself and Carol, we came from a sort of finance background. We came together in 1996, fantastic year. The entire Philippines was taking off. Anybody remember? Oh yeah, somebody mentioned 1997. The Philippines wasn't taking off. Asia came to a screeching halt. Probably one of the absolute best things that ever happened to us. Because we took a, took a time out and readjusted the business model and said, what could we do? What could we do with our capabilities? What could we absolutely sort of take this pause in the marketplace because literally any of you that were in business at that time remember that basically all funding was shut off, all projects were shut down or put on hold and for the next two or three years everybody just sort of sat and waited and said who could survive. So from those beginnings and, and management we, we got a hold of 
basically what is now the outsourcing industry. We identified that as really where we wanted to grow and focus because it was where the Philippines had an edge. And as businessmen yourselves, businesswomen, businessmen, uh, it's always about what is that edge? What does the Philippines have to offer? So this is our journey. I can go into a little bit, but uh, about 5,500 people, 12 countries right now. I'd like to show just a little bit of video because my folks tell me that they do a better job at explaining what we do than I do. So two sec or give this about two minutes and then I'll come right back. A sea of change is washing over the old ways, the old dynamics of how businesses operate in the planet. The rising tide of climate change impacts and resulting government policies and corporate initiatives are coming upon us. And preparing for them is not a voluntary scenario. Is this a challenge or an opportunity? The choice is ours. Are we going to drown in the coming wave? Or are we going to ride it? Environmental compliance regulations are being set in place and reinforced around the world in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Environmental data disclosure is increasingly recognized by the market as crucial to impact investing. New investor and consumer behaviors are being forged by a combination of revitalized corporate ethics, sustainable profitability, and increased public access to sustainability data. Do you have the right partner that can help you navigate this changing business environment? ADEC Innovations is an impact investing company that constantly develops its technology portfolio with solutions that generate social and environmental impact. For over 20 years, we have been in the business of helping global organizations integrate sustainability into their corporate strategies. Our experts make accurate assessments and develop cost-effective solutions for energy and carbon management, environmental planning, environmental impact management, waste and wastewater management, and environment, health, and safety. By mitigating environmental risk, Companies can make informed business decisions on how best to spend their money in relation to new business opportunities, cost reductions, increased brand reputation, and investment portfolio ratings. We are now transitioning to a new economy based on creating value instead of just taking value from the environment. An economy where sustainability metrics are just as important as financial ones. When you proactively manage your sustainability issues, you are in a better position to make your business more sustainable and climate resilient. ADEC Innovations knows this from experience. With our consulting expertise, we have been helping Fortune 500 companies intensify innovation with their sustainability programs and reap the reputational benefits of disclosing the top sustainability reporting bodies and initiatives such as CDP, the Global Reporting Initiative, and the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Let us help you achieve the next level for your organization. Let us help you ride atop the waves of the coming sea of change. So, what we learned, this was bloody difficult. <laughs> this was really hard. Uh, just because you have a good idea and it actually saves people money, uh, you might not have the timing right. Uh, it might not be acceptable in the marketplace. Uh, there, there's just a hundred possible things. I mean, it, the video looks nice, but I'm telling you that for years, what we were selling or the concept of change and trying to bake it into people's business plan was, was more taken sort of as a, yeah, that's nice, wonderful, but you know, what else are you doing for us? Uh, so there's some persistence. Absolutely, I'm not trying to tell you, you know, how you should run your business, but if you believe in something, you have to have persistence. But you have to have the intelligence persistence to bring it back and, and how do you make it relevant? How do you make an idea relevant for a particular marketplace? So we literally had to sort of dumb down our, or be not as aggressive about what we wanted to put out there as the, the velocity of change we were recommending to customers for them to finally say, yes, we can do something. So instead of engaging in a half a million dollar program, they might only engage in a $25,000 program. 
but then what we found was the next year, 25 led to 50, 50 led to. So it was more like being willing to adjust our own sites just because we thought it was a good idea. The market did not recognize this for quite some time. So we learned a lot of things, mostly what not to do. And I, if anybody in business out here will know that you tend to do several things that don't work, hopefully you learn some tuition from that and adjust your business model and, and quickly, rapidly go back out to the marketplace. So, ah, this is, observe global trends, be forward thinking. I guess, you know, in a summary, what made ADEC different was we have always, right from day one, focused on saying, what are we going to go and take Filipino talent, put it in a structure that creates a global best product or service that whether it was delivered in New York or Paris or Brussels, uh, it, wouldn't, it, it wouldn't matter because it was world class. So we benchmarked ourselves against the best and brightest and said we are going to be out there to compete with them. Be forward thinking. The reality of where the market is even today uh, is not going to be where it is tomorrow. As an example, some of you near and dear to our hearts might have remembered the old days of Kodak and having, uh, you can't take too many shots with your camera. Be careful you point and shoot. Don't waste film. I don't know how many times your parents might have told you that, or you went through it. What do you mean? How many shots did you take? Uh, but the reality is we have two businesses that were, frankly, Kodak discovered the digital camera. And they were put out of business because they focused on their core business model of film while other players decided that saying film is, is part of what we do, but we also have to move on. So adjusting the business model and being willing to open up to where are we today? Things are absolutely changing in a rapid fashion in business. Uh, we have transparency, compliance. The, these, uh, we have this recent disclosure, the Panama Papers. Uh, these are new realities. These are actually existing realities that are being brought to the forefront. This is what business is in 2016 and beyond. These are, the, these are new items that we have to cook into our business models. All right, uh, generally speaking, we're viewed as a solution provider. So if you were to say like what bucket is ADEC in, we, pro, we widely are, are spoken about as coming from the outsourcing industry. We provide solutions for people. I would say, or the, the industry itself would say there's $25 billion, there's a million plus workers. Uh, we're positioned as number two in the world, India's number one. We should be very concerned. That's a fantastic number. I can tell you in 18 years, we've seen it grow from about two, $300 million to 25 billion. Uh, is that always gonna be where it is? Is it gonna go from 25 to 50? I don't know. I would tell you that technology is really starting to look at this industry and starting to take away some of those potential jobs. Will that happen right away? I don't know. But I know it's something that we need to be concerned with. It's been a great, successful driver for the Philippines. We need to deliver and develop more intellectual property, more solutions homegrown from the Philippines versus depending on work being brought to the Philippines. 2016, process with a purpose. It happens to be something very close to us is we knew we had capability to process things. We knew we had capability to spin up applications. Uh, we, we run programs all over the globe. But we really said about 12 years ago, could we refine and deliver that with a purpose? The purpose is to have an impact. So to have a higher calling about why we do something is, was important for myself and Carol. And we absolutely sort of cooked that into our business model. So people around the globe, whether they're running a program in Africa uh, or things that you may not know, that 5,000 of the biggest companies in the globe score their carbon footprint here in the Philippines, done by us. And I'm not doing this for an advertisement. I'm trying to tell you that there are some really interesting things and possibilities on how Philippine talent can be used to help a broader picture of what's happening with sustainability while earning a dollar or peso. Process with a purpose. Ah. So, what, what is that? What does it mean? Now, I'm telling you what, when I wake up every day, what I see around me, 
I see these as all opportunities. Some people might, politicians might see them as challenges. Some people might see them as the cost of business or harassment. I see these as absolute opportunities to provide solutions. Again, this is from my perspective. Obviously, we're in this business. So we look at this and say, there is huge opportunities. What could we do to provide solutions? So this is in, in front of us. I mean, I think all of us have witnessed the recent heat waves in the Philippines. Not to include, you know, super typhoons that are wiping, coming through the Philippines, killing thousands of people. This is not one-off circumstances. This is climate change. And whether you watch Fox News or you watch CNN, with whatever political stripe that you come from, this is a reality. It is also an opportunity. We're not the only country that is now going to lose huge amounts of coastline and eventual islands to rising seas. It's hitting corporations. Huge companies are going bankrupt. I'm not sure any of you follow this, but this is the world's biggest coal company went bankrupt about a week and a half ago. So coal, what the Philippines is actually still installing coal sites, uh, is are we really thinking ahead about the choices we're making on a, on a government level, but even as a company level, about choices and sustainability? So these are realities, but they're also opportunities. California. It's running out of water. Uh, what does this mean? There's new regulations and new business for putting water regulations in effect. We manage some of those programs for the California Water Authority. Again, a business opportunity. So for the business people out there, let me just put it in sense. There's one trillion dollars. The UN would tell you there's two trillion dollars, but let's just say that they're very bullish. Uh, cut it in half. There is $1 trillion of unfunded business opportunities, business models that have yet to be matured to address the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. This was launched by the, by the UN. This is effectively a 15-year business plan where the UN says, wraps up all of the various goals around the, around the world and says, listen, the world has about 100 100 trillion dollar economy if you take if you add up everything there is a missing 1 trillion dollars to help fund these type of solutions that basically help the world go round so as business people or as I can speak for myself and Carol as a business we've we've decided to align our portfolio of solutions into the sustainable development goals so our master plan is aligned with what the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, are so that we can provide that. Whatever your master plan is, all I'm saying is, I don't know, I think that's 12 zeros. That's a heck of a market. And by the way, that's annual. That is not like one off. That means there's $1 trillion every year that is unfunded because a business model is not matured enough yet for people to figure out how to put money in it. They know that there's an ROI but there it isn't quite mature yet so there is the opportunity back to the balancing act make no mistake we were an SME there was a one laptop and one portable printer and a heck of a lot of ambition when myself and Carol started uh, and probably I think the first three to five things fell on their face uh, and for sure, we still get over, over our skis sometimes on situations, and then sometimes you, know, you have the usual HR, you have all sorts of the regular issues of you know, missing, out, missing out opportunities. But it comes down to how do you balance off the excellence of running an operation every day and still cooking in innovation, and not just giving it lip service. That means taking risk. I, I like the previous speaker would say, you know, there's a point to have to be courageous. And whether that's just with P&L or a commitment to be doing something. And whatever that is, I would challenge you to think about it and how you're going to bring you know, better jobs, solutions that will have an impact beyond just the day-to-day P&L. Get to the head of the crisis. This sustainability, I, obviously, I'm in the business. I'm telling you, this is real. This is impacting people's... Uh, what, there's, we have clean water for six billion people. There's seven billion on the earth. Uh, there's, there's huge inequities in wealth. 
There's huge issues in regarding climate change and the impact that's having to business. This is a crisis. Believe it or not, what is, you know, how do you get ahead of that? Think in multiple time years, or time, time scales. One year isn't good enough. The reality is, you know, we all have day jobs. Probably most of us have multiple day jobs and a couple spare night jobs just to keep things going. But you have to think, where are we going to be one year, three years, 10 years? Invite challenge. Be OK with having somebody be critical about your business plan. I mean, actually, the more people that ever told us no, that this wasn't going to work, it actually interests me more. Because we did take on board what they said, but then it only firmed up our belief we were on to something. And we needed to refine it so that people could understand. And we're still having to do that. Most of you probably have never heard of ADEC. But you know, we're, we're continuing to grow what and how people understand what services we provide for the globe. Be skeptical of success. What does that mean? Success sometimes lures you into being, by God, I've got this right. In other words, whatever I do is going to be right. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's sort of a trap. And it, it keeps you in this little cocoon of happiness. But the world marches right around you. And before you know it, change has put you two or three steps behind. So it's really keeping that critical thinking going. ADEC innovation story, absolutely. I think Richard mentioned we're very global because we always thought about how do we make sure we have a balanced business of outside the Philippines and inside the Philippines. Uh, we are trying to think beyond. This is our story. Very happy Philippine company uh, looking to you know, move, move out. We are listing probably within the next year or two in the UK. Uh, that again is more about us positioning so we can tell our story about what we do. This is our story. I guess I would leave you with, uh, you know, appreciate the time, Richard, Rebecca, for allowing us to sort of tell our story. Uh, I would leave you with, wh what's your story? What is your impact going to be? And thank you very much.